Hello friends, we are live, May the 9th, 2022, Monday, happy Monday everybody, how are you doing today? I'm continuing in my re review of COVID-19, The Great Reset, the book slash essay that was put out by Thierry Mallory and Klaus Schwab, 110 pages, kind of like semi-book, semi-essay combination in between the two and the last video I did I reached up to page 62 where we just found out that they were hoping to get 250 billion in stimulus funding they got 250 billion reasons why they want to achieve this great reset and how they are determined not to go back to the way things were before so if we continue on I'm just going to go through the notes that I took and uh, on, starting on page 62, they're talking about technological reset. And they say, we see how contact tracing has an unequaled capacity and a quasi-essential place in the armory needed to combat COVID-19. Contact tracing. This is what they're talking about. While at the same time being positioned to become an enabler of mass surveillance. So they admit it's going to allow them to have mass surveillance of the population. And um, they talk about everything shifting towards e-things, more e-learning, more e-commerce, more e-gaming, more e-books, more e-attendance, blah, 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 blah. They're talking about robotic process automation. They say the most effective way, right, to curtail or stop transmission of the virus, followed by, you know, besides, besides widespread testing, besides widespread isolation, they're saying, is contact tracing and this is the whole uh, surveillance thing so they say here no surprise that digital tracing has become one of the most sensitive issues in terms of what's going on and how it may affect privacy absolutely right and then they give a quote on page 65 they say it's no surprise that digital tracing has become one of the most uh, sorry I read the wrong part of my notes page 65 they say i think it's essential that we show what we really mean when we say that you should be able to trust technology when you use it and that it's not part of a new era of surveillance this is for virus tracking right and it can help us have open societies this is a quote from margaret vestager the eu commissioner for competition so they say they want to implement this contact tracing but they want to convince people that you can trust the technology remember when at the beginning of the pandemic when there was a, a push uh, to download these contact tracing apps a, a lot of countries it didn't go over as well as they were hoping it would because it didn't get adopted because a lot of people didn't trust it and they sort of anticipated that they tried to get people to trust it and they said they will cite health and safety as justification for increased surveillance. They admit that on page 66. And then they say, well, because of this, because we're going to contact trace everybody, we're going to have mass surveillance. They say there's a risk of dystopia. The word dystopia just means like a, a collapsed civilization, like after World War III or something. So they say that it could be a risk of dy dystopia. And um, But later on, they say, Dystopian scenarios are not a fatality. It's true that in the post-pandemic era, per personal health and well-being may become a, a greater priority, especially when this tech surveillance genie is out of the bottle, they say, right? But they say the benefits of technology will outweigh sacrificing individual collective values and freedoms. So they, they, they're not scared of a dystopian reality. Now, I want to introduce, on page 67, they give a quote from Yuval Nora Harari. Now, you've probably heard this person's name before. He wrote two books. They're like four or 500 page tomes. You know, they're, they're, they're big texts. I've read both of them. Not to blow my own horn, but I'm just saying I wanted to see what this guy was all about. And the first one was called Sapiens. The second one was called Homo Deus. And what those books are, they are uh, books that promote atheism, and they are anti-Christian books. 
They both try to defeat Christianity and they try and promote atheism. These books um, were not written by Yuval Noah Harari by himself. There's no way. How do I know that? I saw him in an interview and he's talking casually and he says, my husband and me, my husband and me, he can't even use pop proper grammar. I think that his first language is, uh, is Hebrew. English is not even his first language. So for someone to have the capability to put these books together that have dozens and dozens of footnotes, hundreds and hundreds of hours of research put into them, mostly about evolution and um, history that supports their own views. You would need a team of like, you know, 30 researchers working full time for six months to put these books together. And they were put together for a specific purpose to promote atheism and to attack Christianity. You know, the scripture says that in the end times, uh, many antichrists will, will arise. Well, this gentleman, Yuval Noah Harari, he is an antichrist, right? Just the same as Sam Harris is an antichrist. They are against Christ. So you have the four horsemen of, of the uh, atheism apocalypse, they call themselves, or, or people call them that. Uh, Richard Dawkins, Daniel Dennett, who is a Canadian professor. He's probably not as well known. Uh, Christopher Hitchens, who's dead now and Sam Harris. You can add Yuval Nora Harari to the fifth. In fact, Yuval Nora Harari has perhaps even superseded them in popularity. Um, and so those two books, they're on every university campus. They'll be quoted for the next 10 years, guaranteed. And um, I don't recommend reading them, but that's basically the purpose of those books, just so you know. And they quote him uh, in this section here about the risk of dystopia. He says that it, it, eventually governments will demand every citizens wear a biometric bracelet or some other biometric method that monitors body temperature, heart rate 24 hours a day. The resulting data will be hoarded and analyzed by government algorithms. I'm semi paraphrasing here because I don't want to use the exact quote word for word. I don't want to get uh, caught by any, uh, what do they call that, copyright things. Uh, but you can download and read this book yourself, although even this book is horrible. The algorithms will know that you're sick even before you know it, and they will also know where you've been and who you have met. The chains of infection will be drastically shortened and even cut altogether. Such a system could arguably stop the, uh, arguably stop the epidemic in its tracks within days. Doesn't that sound wonderful? This is what Yuval is saying. Then he goes on to say, well, the downside, of course, uh, would give legitimacy to a terrifying new surveillance system. If they know, for example, that you clicked on the Fox News instead of a CNN link, that can te teach them something about your political views and perhaps even your personality. Uh, but if they can monitor what happens to your body temperature, blood pressure, heart rate, etc., etc., they're going to know what makes you laugh, they're going to know what makes you cry, and they're going to know what makes you angry. They're going to know all this biological data that's going to be uploaded and analyzed, and the same technology that identifies your coughs will also identify when you laugh or get angry. This is what he's saying. That it, when car corporations and governments start harvesting this biometric data en masse, they can get to know us far better than we know ourselves. And they will, this is interesting, he says, they will not just predict your feelings, but also manipulate our feelings and sell us anything they want, be it a product or a politician. Interesting. And this phrase they leads them segues into the concept of technological solutionism. In other words, technology for as a solution for everything. He put forward this term in his book written in 2012, The Net Delusion, I believe. They don't mention the book. They just say he put it in a book. I'm assuming it's The Net Delusion by Evgeny Mor Morozov. And I will not read anything by Evgeny Morozov. And again, they go on and they're going to blame this on companies. It's going to be a cooperation between companies and governments. Page 70, they talk about the companies that are going to survive are the ones that take advantage of the Internet of Things. And uh, I won't bore you with the details here, but they mention some companies and how the governments are going to cooperate with them, etc., etc. Page 73, I'll skip forward a little bit. Um, they give an anecdote. I don't know why they throw this anecdote in this book. They talk about... Uh, in 2010, 
40,000 ventilators were ordered by a company by the U.S. government, and they were never delivered because of corruption and because of they didn't didn't feel they were getting enough profits. Um, and so they it allows them to segue into the idea of, of stakeholder capitalism, where environmental, social, and government cooperate instead of just profits. They're saying we're going to have this new type of stakeholder capitalism where it takes into account uh, uh, the most important being climate change, right? So they're advocating companies uh, will have to obey these type of go woke policies, right? Uh, social issues, environmental issues, especially climate change. I don't know why they're bringing that up, but they're saying this is going to be the new type of of corporatocracy, which cooperates with the government, and they're going to control. Well, you know what happens historically when governments try to make companies more efficient? Well, we've already seen it, what's happened, right? Um, they were boasting here earlier about um, Netflix as being one of these companies that's going to do so well. They've lost billions in value when people realize that they're promoting perverted concepts, right? People are just like, hey, we don't want anything to do with that. We don't want what the the five percent of the population wants with their with their perversions. Same thing with Disney. Disney had this all this great status, and they started following these woke, you know, uh, stakeholder capitalism, ESG, environmental, social govern governance, and look what happened to them. They're getting boycotted. They're they're getting their preferred tax holder status revoked in the state of Florida anyway. So they think that they know what's going to be the best for the future. And they're detailing it in this book, COVID-19, The Great Reset. But they're making a lot of mistakes along the way. And I'm guessing that the mistakes that they make, they're going to try and rectify and improve them for the next wave, which will be probably being released in the fall, right? They've already told us they're going to have a, a, a second pandemic that they're planning for um so they're saying page 74 there's going to be more people upset so they're going to have more social activism um stakeholder capitalism is going to become more important that that buzz term that they use they're going to have they, they're going to call it an industry reset where all small businesses are going to be closed and they're anticipating the need for the the, the this etc and page 77, they say that they're estimating 75% of independent restaurants will sh have to shut down. They were a little overambitious. They were a little overambitious in how quickly they would be able to destroy the economy. Now, we can see today that the stock market is collapsing, and so that's on track. Um, but it'll accelerate as we move forward. They say people are going to be encouraged not to touch the products they buy. Simple pleasures like smelling a melon or squeezing a fruit will be frowned upon and will eventually become a thing of the past. <clears throat> well, again, they were a little overambitious in that. So I reached up until page 82. That's basically all I wanted to cover today. It's a little bit um, boring and tedious. I realize that. And it's not a positive book to, to go through and, and review. But uh, how many pages have I got left? I got 30 pages left. So hopefully I can finish that uh, this week. And maybe in the next two days, I'll, I'll finish reviewing that book. And then I can move on to something else. Um, Robert Malone mentioned one that I may want to pick up for my next um, review. And that is the book that uh, coined the phrase mass uh hypnosis, uh, mass formation hypnosis, which is uh, the term that uh, Robert Malone made popular. It's actually from a book written by this guy here, and I'll see if I can pull it up because this might be the next book that I'm going to try and get a hold of. And it's called by a fellow by the name of Desmet, The Psychology of Totalitarianism. Oh, it's not available yet. It's going to be published in June of 2022 called The Psychology of Totalitarianism uh, by a fellow by the name of Desmet, Matthias Desmet. He is a um, professor from Belgium. He, he works in uh, 
Department of Psychology and Educational Sciences at Ghent University in Belgium. So he's got a book coming out in June 2022, and I think I'll order that, pre-order it so that I can have that because that is going to be touching on what this this whole mass formation thing that people are refusing to recognize the the ability of the entire groups to act in one way and when it acts in a bad way they call it mass formation psychosis so but the, the 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 mass movement they call it mass formation anyway we'll get to that later so hopefully i can finish off this book uh, this week it's depressing it's boring it's it's um you know the devil he may be attractive and he may have all this great abilities, but I think essentially he's stupid when it comes down to it. Because this whole global agenda has been a, a satanic push towards atheism and replacing theistic thinking with thinking that it's going to be only up to human capability, only up to human ingenuity. And they're saying by implementing this great reset they're going to save the planet they're going to kill all these birds with one stone they're going to save the planet they're going to you know um um wow uh, you know all the things that they're saying they're, they're, that it's going to help this it's going to help that it's going to have a better cooperation between government and 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 uh industry it's going to allow for mass surveillance it's going to allow for uh world peace because all the Nation states are going to be cooperating on and on and on about how wonderful it's going to be because of this great reset that they're implementing. Well, you can make up your own mind. You read it. You let me know what you think. I'm pretty opinionated. Obviously, I'm biased because I'm a theist. Um, and so a lot of these things I see that are detrimental to human daily life, obviously, I'm not going to like them. I'm going to be resistant to them. So... I'll let you make up your own mind. But we're at page 82, so we'll keep on going. I hope you have a fantastic day. I hope you have a fantastic week. I thank you very much for watching. I'll cut this short today, and we'll talk to you again tomorrow, and um, hopefully we can get this thing finished this week. Thanks a lot for watching. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Bye now. Bye-bye.